Hi everyone, it's me, Krillius, Team Racing Productions MC and producer. And joining me today is Racine Penn Darvis, mother, goddess, icon, legend. Hey Racine, how are you? How are you? Greetings and salutations. <laughs> <laughs> today we have a special guest with us today, a fabulous songstress, a, a, a captivating crooner. Welcome to Team Racing YouTube channel, Gay Adegbalola. Welcome. Well, greetings to you. Let me get it. There we go. There hello, we go. hello, hello. Yeah. Hello, You're the hype hello, man. Hello. Huh? Okay. <laughs> It is so great to have you here today. Gay, how are you? I am very fine. I had a, a birthday two days ago. So mm. I'm still I'm still in recovery mode. Yes. yes Happy yes. belated. Yeah. Happy Thank belated. You. It's, it's great to celebrate another year. So before yes. we talk about your new music and special mm -hmm. upcoming performance, let's talk a little bit about your background, including okay. your years as an educator. Racine, okay. please start us off. Okay. Well, you were born and raised in R Fredericksburg, Virginia. You, yes. were the you were a teacher for nearly 20 years years. And in 1982, you were named Virginia State Teacher of the Year. Yeah. How have those experiences influenced <laughs> you as a performer and as a songwriter? Okay, well, let me let me just back up a minute and say <laughs> when I when I grew up in Fredericksburg, uh, it, it was what I call apartheid. Um, mm. There was black, there was white. Uh, all of my education, all of my friends, all of my social interactions, everything was strictly within the confines or the goodness of the black community. And I went up north to get uh, educated and I was supposed to come back home as a doctor, but that did not happen. But I had this whole science background and um, I had worked in uh, research and I'd worked in the hospital environment using my science, but there were no job opportunities back in Fredericksburg. So they always need teachers. And as it turned out, I was a good teacher. Now, uh, what happens is that with teaching, you have a captive audience. So you learn how to perform mm -hmm. and you learn how to perform within time limits. And you know when you're, when you're losing your audience and you know when you've got your audience. So, um, and I taught eighth grade science, hallelujah, bless me. <laughs> <laughs> if any of you have been around 13 year olds, you know that um, from day to day, they don't know whether they're boys and girls or men and women. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a hormonal time. So I taught yeah. science and science really is quite like doing magic if you do it right. And um, so That's just that true. whole uh, performance timing, uh, working a show, if you will, mm -hmm. and knowing how to pull your audience in, mm -hmm. then, um, oh, okay, then, then, uh, then I learned how to do that. The other thing about teaching is that teachers don't get paid very much at all. And because of that, and because I had a sickly child, um, because my child was sick a lot, I was home a lot, and I had this old guitar under the bed and I would play and entertain my son. The guitar was called Baby, because I had uh, nothing else to hold at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, and then as it happened, uh, because I needed more money, I started playing in a little club here three nights a week here in Fredericksburg. And that's, uh, that's what started it all. Wow, yeah. wow, wow, so, wow. Teaching <laughs> taught me how to perform. Yes. And, uh, teaching caused me to perform. Yes, kind of yes. yes. And uh, that must be so fabulous, you know, uh, to be a teacher. One of the great things about being a teacher is being able to have a direct influence on, you know, the new rising generation and mm -hmm. also to mm -hmm. see, you know, what's going on with that generation, how they may change or not change the world, you know, in whatever ways. And it probably gives you a little bit more insight and perspective on the world at large, where we're going, where we're coming from, mm -hmm. and how to infuse that into, because your music is a lot of that, <laughs> and really how to infuse that into it. So, you know, yeah. I'm sure, you know, that must, uh, that must have helped a lot. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that 
one of God's greatest gifts is to dance. Mm. And that's what the young people did for me. It, they kept me current so that every new dance came out. I, I knew how to do it. <laughs> and I really miss that impact right now because it's yes. so much part of my being. But, uh, you know, that's yes. just one of those exchanges. Mm -hmm. And when the kids see that you can dance and they can teach you, mm -hmm. then it's a real symbiotic relationship. That's yeah. great to hear. And you were a member of the Trio Sapphire, the Uppity right. Blues Woman for 25 right. years. Right. Uh, what do you look? See, Racine has the live album. <laughs> <laughs> live uh, at, uh, yeah, that's, yes, that's yes, live, yes, at Wolf, yes. live at Wolf Chat. Yes, live yes, Wolf yes Wolf. honey. Uh, my favorite cut. This it. is one of my favorite live albums. My favorite cut on here is a bitch with a bad attitude. All right yes. now. Yes. Right now. All right now. All Ms. right Ms. now. Ms. Yeah. Yeah. Tell yeah. me, uh, what do you want? What do you most want people to remember about that time and the music you all created? And tell me why the blues well number one the blues is the poor person's psychiatrist mm, 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 and um there are different branches on that blues tree and i guess the branch we are from is what you call classic blues mm, so our blues uh especially initially was quite informed by ida cox alberta hunter bessie smith ma rainey um, Victoria oh. Spivey, mm -hmm. Sippy Wallace, mm -hmm. that part of the blues tree. It was the women who first recorded and it gave women a voice. Um, it, gave, it gave us the voice to speak our minds, to um, talk about the men when they weren't doing right. Mm -hmm. uh, it, gave us, <laughs> uh, it gave us the power to say that sex is okay. Uh, it gave us the ability really to make money at a time when uh, basically all you had to be, all you could be as a woman would be a domestic at that particular, we're talking 20s and 30s. Mm -hmm. So the first, uh, and they documented the times. Um, the very first blues recording was a song called Crazy Blues. It was recorded mm -hmm. by Mamie Smith. The last verse of it goes, I'm going to be like a Chinaman. Go and get me some hop. That's opium. Going to mm -hmm. get myself a gun and shoot myself a cop. Lord, mm -hmm. I got the crazy blues. So mm -hmm. 80,000 80, copies in one month. People didn't even have record players. And they were documenting how people felt. Yeah, it might not have yes. been going out and getting a gun, but it was quite like a forerunner to the mm -hmm. blues. So anyway, we were able to uh, both Anne and I in particular, we loved the music from this era, which tends to be a little more uh, more than your typical one, four five blues. Mm -hmm. um, and we just started to uh, do it. We could do a whole night if you wanted of Bessie Smith. Um, yeah, the group is interesting because uh, it's a black, a Jew, and a hillbilly. And, <laughs> and, and I don't know. I don't know. I mean, even if you have a group like uh, the Indigo Girls, for example, mm. they have men backing them up. So we would walk in a bar and the sound people would go, hey, where's the band? And we'd say, we are the band. <laughs> and, and we made a living. I don't know. I don't know. You know, you usually have to be top 10 or top 20 at least mm -hmm. to make some money in music. Of course, it's different now because you have all of this, uh, uh, all, all of the technical uh, mm -hmm. IT or whatever it is you do. Yeah, everything is streaming. Everything, everything yes, is streaming. Different ways now to everything do different is still things. Streaming, the industry but, does uh, change um, a lot. Oh, yeah, and I actually, we, we're going to get into crazy. that um, a little bit later. But when, you know, you know, but to just interject, I love mm -hmm. the fact that blues, is it speaks to the heart, the soul, the yes. rhythm of the nation. Yes. Mm -hmm. And when you talk about blues and mm -hmm. the wonderful marriage of blues, country, and jazz, rock and roll, all of that, all of that comes from when we talk about blues and we talk mm -hmm. about all of these artists who went on to become, you know, we talk about the creative way of blues, how songs were written and messages mm -hmm. were sent mm -hmm. and all these naughty songs were written like fine, mm -hmm. fine daddy, mm -hmm. you know, fine, fat daddy. I remember the mm -hmm. first time I heard that record and I was like, wait a minute, let me listen to this again, <laughs> you know, and, uh, you know, hot dog and jelly roll. 
Uh -huh. All of those songs, that, and I yeah, want right. a little sugar in my bowl when you uh -huh. sing it. Right. it you know, there's a you lot with the blues. I love how you point this out, racing, because it really does capture, mm -hmm. um, you know, the spirit, the soul. It, it comes from deep within, mm -hmm. and the blues always uh, finds a way to really say what people were talking about that sometimes weren't you know there for polite conversation but it's what mm -hmm. you know people talk about in their homes around the table and, and, and in different ways of of experiencing life and the blues really really brought that out you know yeah. so when you listen to a good blues record and it just transports you oh mm -hmm. nothing oh, like yeah. oh yes i mean you know uh, blues had a baby and they called it rock and roll mm -hmm. and and you can hear the influence of sun house for example on muddy waters for example on bb mm -hmm. king for example up to present day it's a very clear and direct path and the blues is still very much alive if you go down yes, to uh, mississippi and alabama in those parts uh people on the radio People still listen to the radio. Oh, yes. Yeah. Ooh, Louisiana, Georgia, yeah, yeah, all yeah. those little places. Those, and, oh. but, the, but, you know, when I think about people who marry, when I remember seeing you guys perform one time, and you reminded me a little bit of Rosetta Thorpe. Mm. And when I heard, because I remember the first time I heard her, she <laughs> brought in blues, jazz, rock, oh, yeah, yeah, all yeah, into yeah, the gospel, yeah. and, they, and they kicked her out. But they yeah. had to bring her back in because she yeah, was right. rocking she so was, good. And she was so great and so <laughs> influential in terms of her instrument. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I don't think there's anybody today, male or female, that plays like Sister Rosetta Tharp. Mm -hmm. And uh, oh, this will be interesting because you're in the D.C. area. Am I correct on that? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, when she got married for the third time, she uh, rented... Uh, Griffith Stadium, which was before uh, Kennedy Center, before all those stadiums, right? So she rented the stadium to get married, and she hadn't even met the person she was going to marry. And she just invited everybody to come. I mean, this woman was a star. She was amazing. Yeah. Yes. She was amazing. And, and, and what I loved about her, she was so courageous and bold, and uh -huh. she was so bold about being very open about her sexuality yeah, and her right. and Maria were yes, lovers right. for many, yeah. many years and everyone yeah. knew it, but, and they were breaking ground and didn't know they were breaking ground because they were living their truth. Yeah. Which I thought yeah, was well, I, I, I'm not sure why that is, but quite a few blues women uh, uh, tend to true. be. Mm -hmm. yeah. True, true. And uh, some say it and some don't, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, you I know, do. Think about so people like, how about good, that? Yeah. Yeah. And you and you're bold and you're courageous. I think you're when I when the first time I saw you, I said these women are trailblazers because <laughs> first of all, they kicking the, the men's behind. They kicking the men's behind so bad that the men had that. I know they were hating on y'all because y'all was like, we don't need you, baby, because we coming in the door kicking butt. Yeah, actually, we got great support from the um, the male blues players. The blues men were quite positive with us and quite in our corners. Um, it was a little different with the sound text. They, they didn't want women telling them what to do. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but I, I had somewhat of a hard time in that I did not play, quote unquote, the women's circuit. I was on a blues circuit. So I, I had a, I, and nowadays solo, I'm doing more um, playing for women's festivals and, and such. Mm -hmm. but, um, but our music was, was uh, strictly based to a blues audience. Yeah. How about and that? It was cool. Cause we and it, was, it was amazing. Fest, blues I mean, fest, and it kind of fast, yeah. And you do it and do it so well. And speaking about your music, you released your first solo project in mm -hmm. 1999. That's and correct. then the Grio came in 2018. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I think I had six one six uh, solo duo efforts in between. Yes, yes, yes. Uh -huh. And when we talk about you, also collaborated with other musicians. Oh, you got it all. Yeah, we got it all. We got it all. <laughs> wow, somebody did a little research. <laughs> yeah. And when you talk about wow. you know collaborations with other museums and uh, musicians, including mm -hmm. your son Juno. What are some of your favorite songs from that time? Oh, goodness. Okay. I, I guess there's a different favorite on each CD. Mm -hmm. um, 
on uh, uh, Bittersweet Blues, uh, there's Big Ovaries, Baby. Um, yeah, and I'm getting ready to re-record that because I've yes. certainly improved in 25 years. <laughs> that's thinking, <laughs> that's thinking I've improved in 25 years. Uh, neoclassic blues is all vocal and piano, and they're quite. It starts off with Ma Rainey's "Black Bottom." Uh-huh. Um, so uh, uh, a special song on there is "Dirty Dozen." And I, I don't know if you're familiar, you're probably familiar with that term. Mm-hmm. Uh, what, what it was, was that when so, uh, when slaves, enslaved people, people mm-hmm. were old and lame or uh, had emotional problems, they were sold off in lots of a dozen. So being the resilient people that we are, we took it. We took that and turned it around and made it like a yo mama kind of joke. You know, mm-hmm. you're so bad. I'm gonna stick you in the dozens. And your pepper <laughs> ain't your color. And your mama did the Lord. And your pepper is your cousin. Mm-hmm. And your mama do the Lord and law. So um, that's a good one. With you know, uh, he took my traditional blues, my son. And he programmed them. And it's very synthetic and very hard. He was into some goth stuff at the time. And we call it industrial <laughs> blues. It's heavy. <laughs> yeah, it's heavy hitting, right? Uh, Gay Without Shame. Uh, Meet Me With Your Black Drawers On. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. is, a, is a good one. Uh, blues in All Flavors, the big hit. It's called Give Me Some Broccoli. Give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. And... Uh, and uh, for with the Wild Roots, uh, I guess our, our signature song was uh, Fireball. Fireball. Mm. Fireball. I love yeah, Fireball. Yes. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, I when I listen to The Grill, um, one, I love how you are, bring, you know, that storytelling element is there within it. Um, and for anyone who doesn't know, Agria is a member of a class of traveling poets, musicians, storytellers, you know, bringing the narrative forward of our people who, you know, they maintain that tradition and the oral history in parts of West Africa. And when I listen to that album, like that is really, really what I get. As a matter of fact, uh, when it came out, that's 2019. For me, it almost captures what was going on at that time, you know, leading up into that 2020 time. And of course, you know, you've seen so many, you've lived, um, you know, uh, you've lived a life. So you've seen all the different things that have mm-hmm. happened from yeah. when you were young and, you know, things were different with, uh, you know, segregation uh, through the different wars to even where we are now. Um, but that album really captures all yeah. the things of that moment. You know, well, it has it's called the Gria. Yes, yeah, the, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Uh, the opening song is called Nothing's Changed. And it's kind of mm. like a little history lesson. Well, when I perform it live now, I've added a verse about Charlottesville and the KKK. Mm. And I've added a verse about... Um, yeah, uh, if 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 blacks had been at the Capitol, they'd all mm-hmm. be dead by now. Maybe. Uh, yeah, Maybe. so I've updated it even uh, to speak to just last year. Yeah, there's this uh, song, Liaria. You, there's a line there that <laughs> I love every time I hear you say, God don't like ugly. Right. And you're ugly to the bone. <laughs> right, 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 right. It gets right. me together. I love it. So, see, you've been a recording artist for so long, and so much has changed <laughs> over the years. Um, you know, share with me your thoughts on the state of the recording industry now and the music scene, especially for Black and women musicians. Um. Wow, that's a big mouthful. Uh, but but let me just back up and say, I am doing Lyria. I've added it to the set list for my birthday uh, concert Saturday night. So if yes. you have time, gather some of your friends and yes. and have some libations. Mm-hmm. And I will do Lyria. Yes, I will. <laughs> um, uh, nowadays, you know, I'm really not sure. I think a lot of people who really get ahead. It's the same thing. They've got money behind them. Mm. I don't know how many Black people own the means of production. Uh, We might own the way to get a web page, get a platform, but 
I don't know that we uh, really have the power to distribute it nationwide. I think some of that grows, you know, like with someone like Jay-Z. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, for a lot of people who are recording now, we are relying on, uh, yeah, okay, go on, Gay, I'm playing my game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I might add that, that uh, you see this picture, I'm playing slide. And I've probably been playing slide well for about 15 years. So that means I didn't really start slide until my mid 60s. So if you have a desire to play, Mm -hmm. and I encourage every woman I know who is a singer in particular to play guitar or piano because that gives you independence. So for recording, for people who want to go into music, it's really good if you own uh, your talent mm-hmm. and uh, own your um, publishing rights. Mm-hmm. You should be your own publisher if you can and not rely on somebody else doing it for you. Um, so I don't know. I can't tell you what to do and how to do it. I know that when I did um, the GRIO, I hired a publicist. It was very expensive mm-hmm. and and all she did for me was show me how to how to go on Facebook and I really could have gotten a friend to do that um, I don't know I don't know those ropes mm-hmm. and I really can't give you advice all I can do is tell you how I did it and uh, how I've kept uh, last week, I got another royalty check in. Two there we go. Ago, I got another royalty check. I, one was a royalty check, uh, a mechanical royalty check, which means CDs that have been recorded mechanically mm-hmm. I've been getting payment for. And then two days ago, I just got one from ASCAP, and ASCAP deals with uh, airing. Mm-hmm. airing. Uh, and then you got sound exchange, which will give you royal, get you royalties as an artist because ASCAP doesn't get it for you as an artist. Mm. It gets you as a writer or as a publisher, but not as an artist. So yeah. sound exchange mm. is what gives you royalties as an artist. So you want to be aware of that, how to get, we used to call it mailbox money. But, ah. <laughs> <laughs> but now they just send it to you. Send it right to the... Yeah, and you don't really feel it in your hands. You, know? <laughs> you used to get a check, you go and cash it, and you put a little bit in the side, but you would keep a little bit of what we call walk-around money. So you have some walk-around money in your pocket. Well, now everything is just so plastic that I kind of miss that sensation, if you will. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> and we all do. You know, we miss yeah. that, that feeling. Yeah. And you know, yeah. when you talk about uh, new music, the Freedom Song trilogy, yes, and your special upcoming performance. So let's let's talk mm-hmm. about, about okay. That. Um, yeah. Well, first of all, I didn't write at all during 2020. It was just like. Uh, how many more songs do you need about the pandemic and being alone and, and feeling isolated and taking a shot and wearing a mask? I didn't feel any of that. Uh, it was like, I don't need to document that. And then all of a sudden, when 2021 came, my juices just started flowing, you know? Mm-hmm. And yeah, uh, yeah and, and what it started flowing with was, was John Lewis. Yes. What a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful man. Mm, mm, and then mm. when I learned that his, um, the two senators who were elected from Georgia on January 5th, it was all overshadowed because on January 6th, white folks went in and tore up the Capitol and mm. they're still running around free. Well, anyway, on January 5th, the two senators who were elected from Georgia, one was his pastor and the other one had been his former intern. Mm. And it was like, oh my, this man is still alive and well. Yes. And so that, that inspired uh, changing the lyrics to the Negro spiritual, ain't no grave can hold my body yes. down. Ain't oh, no grave man. can hold his down. And I wanted a cello. And, I, and we called a friend and he came in and he said, I, wa- I worked out a full string quartet. Mm. 
and I'm, I'm here to play all four parts. Uh, so that's what you're getting uh, along with my guitar and along with the drum on that one. Uh, Tell Mamala uh, is with horns. And of course, it's a tribute to uh, Kamala Harris, Vice President Kamala yes. Harris, uh, because her stepchildren and her nieces call her Mamala. Ah. And, uh, yeah, Etta James had a big hit called Tell Mama. Yeah. So uh, I, I played with that. And then I kept telling myself that I just needed to keep the faith. And yes. um, a friend of mine gave me a line because I just said, um, oh, uh, he said, you know, Gabe, when we, when we name our fears, we tame our fears. It was like, oh my God, I gotta write that down. Mm -hmm, and then my mm -hmm. next line was, when fear is in my head, I don't hide it, I paint it red. So mm -hmm. get back, Satan, get back. So it yeah, was like, yeah. okay, I, I'm gonna put these three together. So each one came out individually as a singer, mm -hmm. as a solo, as a single, and each single uh, can be found on any uh, any of your servers, you know, iTunes or Pandora mm -hmm. or um, Spotify or wherever. Uh, but uh, a lot of my friends are old, so they wanted uh, <laughs> a the CD. physicals. Yes, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> they still have cars that have CD players, just like <laughs> myself. So I got like, right. and it it's a good thing because. You know, I tell people I love vinyl. I remember when I used to sit in the floor and play 78s and 33s. And, uh -huh. you know, I, you know. Well, they're back in fashion now, honey. They're back in fashion now. <laughs> so if, if it was really good, vinyl. yeah, if it was really good, you played it until the grooves turned white. Ooh, <laughs> I got plenty of, plenty of white albums and white 45s. Yes. Uh, Miss A, what can fans expect from your upcoming performance? Well, I've been kind of uh, teasing my fans. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to play some of my favorite songs. I'm going to play Silver Beaver. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do Big Ovaries. I'll do Lyria. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, no Need Pissing on a Skunk. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, might do, I might do Sugar My Bowl with a piano uh, backing track. Um, I don't know. But, but during the day, I'm going to do my regular Facebook program, uh, my front porch. Yes, program. yes. Uh, it's, been, it's been going on for three years now. And I, I have been doing it. it. I love it. I yeah, I have been it. doing it every it. Saturday, but now yeah. I'm just doing it the last Saturday. So this Saturday, since it's my birthday weekend, and you know how you reflect on times gone by. Mm -hmm. I called up my best friend. I said, girl, I want you to come over and three o'clock on Saturday, we're going to do some dances from back in the day. Ah. We're going to do the yeah. funky full corners. We're going to do the chalipso. We're going to mash the potatoes. Uh, we're going to throw the mashed potatoes in there. And the Uncle, <laughs> Willie, the Uncle Willie and just a little bit of jitterbug. I don't uh -huh. think this can last too much longer. <laughs> and you got to do it all in your socks. Like oh, we can do it. We can do it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yes. But, you know, I like to hear the stomp. You know, I like I, I you turn somebody around and you stomp and you throw your leg out to the side, right? Yes, so. I oh god, I love it, I love it. Um, and so how can people watch the performances by the way, too? Okay, uh, all they gotta do is come to my Facebook page. Mm -hmm. uh, um the the front porch will be live at three mm -hmm. uh, Eastern time. And the concert will be live at eight Eastern time. Now both yeah. of them are archived, but if you want to send me a message, or and it's Queen who'll be getting the messages. If mm -hmm. you want to leave a message or a comment, uh, you need to do it while it's live. And often, if people ask me questions or whatever, Queen will feed me, and then I'll just start uh, talking schmack. Yeah. Speaking of, I'm glad you brought Queen up because I actually do want to touch on this, uh, you know, especially someone in um, a long term relationship with a woman and you've been in the industry so long. And um, I I want what's Queen's support like uh, when it comes to your music and when it comes to your career and, you know, just, you know, having a partner there with you tell me a little it's, bit it's, about uh, that. it's very very difficult you have mm -hmm. to remember that that all during this time with sapphire for 25 years we were mm -hmm. on the road 
Mm. And it's very difficult to sustain a relationship. Um, I, I don't need to say more than that, really, but mm -hmm. it's rough. And, and yeah. people think that road life is joyous and, mm. and uh, it's hard. There's a lot of challenges, yeah. It's hard, it's hard. So um, uh, I made a home with, uh, with one woman for 18 years, mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, uh, she, needed, she needed more than what I could give. Mm. And then after that, I, I had a few dalliances, but when I met Queen, uh, Queen knows how to fit in with everybody. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's so funny that that we got engaged on my 76th birthday. Oh, so, uh, yeah, yeah. She's, she's 20 years younger than I am. <laughs> but uh, she's an old soul and I'm a young one. So uh, <laughs> it works, so it works yeah, perfect. They keep yeah. on the roof, but it's plenty of fire in the furnace. The furnace. There you go. You got it. You got it. You got it. But uh, yeah, so, so um, she is like when, when, when we're at a festival or something, She's not upset if people want to talk to me or interview me or whatever. She helps to make it happen. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I've never had in a mm -hmm. relationship. There is no jealousy at all. It's just uh, total love and support. And she's a woman of deep faith. And mm -hmm. I needed some of that in my life. Uh, I mean, I was raised in the church, but, you know, I wasn't saying grace at every meal. Mm -hmm. But as it is now, we give thanks to, to God uh, three times a day, at least, you know. Uh, the other night we were eating some popcorn. She came in with a bowl of popcorn and started saying grace. I'm like, no way. <laughs> do you, do you really need to say grace for the popcorn. She said, well, let me pull it. I'm just so thankful. And I yeah. said, well, okay, I can understand that. So um, she has brought some of that to my life and also... Uh, she encourages me to speak my truth yes and to to share things that I know um, there, there is no jealousy there is no um, it's it's really how oh, it only took me 76 years to find <laughs> <laughs> That's a Miss Miss Hey, it gets so it was, is the new 50. Don't get it twisted, man. <laughs> <laughs> <So, clears throat> about uh, three months ago, I went to the doctor for my checkup right at the end mm -hmm. of the year. And she told me, oh, you're this, you're that, you're the other. It was like, okay, I hear you. So I really have been uh, uh, trying to change my diet. Mm -hmm. I really have been very conscious of... Uh, um, for example, putting walnuts on my Cheerios because my cholesterol <laughs> was getting high. At this point in my life, uh, I have the kind of love and the kind of home that I that I want. I want to be mm. around for, and so uh, I need to take a little better care of my temple. <laughs> well, that is a great way to end this, and a great way to end with being thankful, being grateful, because you know what. We are so thankful. We are so grateful that we got the time, that we got the opportunity, that we got the space and place to uh, chat with you, to kiki with I, you. I, I, I don't know if I said that for the front porch, half mm -hmm. lit and talking smack, or for the concert, you come to my personal Facebook page, Gaya Degbalola. Mm -hmm. And uh you know, they, everybody can know how to spell it from just, if you just write gay with an E. Yeah, you will find it. Yes, exactly. A As a matter of fact. A D, you will right find now. it. Yeah. Yes, yeah. we are going to remind everyone, actually, by the way. So, uh, gay, I mean, for it's just been so great to do this. <laughs> so great to talk to you. So great to have this moment. Thank you so much. It has been such oh, a pleasure. Thank you so much. How did you guys find me? I don't know. Well, I've you know, when you out yes. there. Yes. So, I mean, <laughs> soon as I heard the interview came up, I immediately say, from Sapphire Uppity Blues Women, I, uh, I was like, well, honey, Our producer, hey. Zar, is on it. He is on it. He is always, you know. Now, is that Zar? Is that yes, Zar. Zar. He was mm -hmm. very helpful to me. 
Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, he is. Uh, we want to remind everyone about your upcoming performances as well as the Freedom Song Trilogy. As you said, you can go on your Facebook to get connections to that. The mm-hmm. music can be found in all place where music is. So it's Spotify, it's iTunes, it's all over. You can get it all there. And uh, Miss Eric Balola, do you have a website? I think you're looking at it right now. Ah, there we go. This is the website. Is. There we go. Yeah, so the website. Is, uh, that is, uh, yeah, and you have it on the shop page. Exactly. And this is, uh, <laughs> the, even the, um, it hasn't been, the sound bites aren't uploaded for this one, but all mm-hmm. the rest of the CDs, there are sound bites for everything. And, awesome. Uh, awesome. Yeah. And so we're going to have those links in the mm-hmm. description. So viewers, okay. you can go ahead and check them out. We'll have those links in the description. And of course, get yourself ready and rearing for Miss Adek Valola's mm-hmm. performance. Yeah, so and the whole event you. at uh, at Durham is a gay, it's a gay event. Oh, uh, in Durham, yes. North Carolina. Yeah, it's a Deep Roots concert and it's a it's on Thursday night, there's a concert. On Friday, all day, there are um, workshops and I'm doing a history of women in the blues. I have videos of uh, Sister Rosetta Tharp and videos of, of Bessie Smith and, mm. and uh, people of that ilk, Alberta Hutta, um, that I'll be sharing with people. And then awesome. there's a dance Saturday night Oh, it's going to be good. Oh, that sounds good. That sounds good. So once again, viewers, the link will be in the description to mm-hmm. the website. So click around and, you know, check out everything that Miss Adek Balola has to offer. Keep up with schedule, get some music yeah. and, yeah. you know, live your best life. Thank you so much. <laughs> this was fabulous. This was fabulous. Racine, any last words? Oh, my God. Our last words. Thank you. Okay. Thank for being you. A, a trailblazer. Thank you for being a warrior. Thank Thank you for using your music to uplift, to inspire, and motivate us. But most of all, thank you for living in your truth. Because to be a writer, to be a songwriter, to be a musician is a gift from God. And you carry that light very well. And you carry it and you bring forth your blackness, your queerness, your womanhood. Every time you hit the stage, You bring forth the ancestors who carry you through, who Mm -hmm. lift you up to inspire you to be that light. And I say to you, keep glowing, because, honey, I've been watching you and feeling your light for over 20, 30 years. All right, now. That's a good thing. And now I feel your light even brighter, because I can Mm -hmm. say you are my friend. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank Um, you. do Do I have a chance? No, okay. Oh no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. You can have. Oh, I just, I just. Remark. Oh, and I don't know. Maybe you can throw this in somewhere, but um, I don't have any difficulty with being called an old woman. <laughs> when we say, when we say older or golden or senior, what we're doing is we're trying not to say old because we think old is bad. We think old is negative. And every time I get a chance, I tell somebody I am an old woman and you don't get old by being a fool, you know, so, so it's okay to, to call me that. It's, it, yes. it's magnificent. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, oh, you, thank you. Great way okay. to leave this and, and, uh, off. Tell Zara, tell Zara, thank you. I will. I certainly will relay that to everyone watching. Please follow Team Racing Productions on all forms of social media at Team Racing. Click around our YouTube channel, see what other interviews and news and views and everything we have on there. And uh, make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe. But most of all, thank you for watching. Bye, everyone. (laughs) Bye-bye. You're just so cute.